current weather situation is gloomy. Mother Nature is putting on a show for us, and I figured why not film it. I've been up since uh, 1.45 a.m. anyways. <laughs> so here's to that. Uh, always a good time to film, right? weather's going to continue to be this crappy today, I'm going to stay inside and film and record some music, hopefully. So that is the plan. Uh, we'll see what transpires. It's always a fun day when I go to the House of Guitars. There's always something cool to check out there. Uh, whether I'm going to have my guitars worked on or just want to play around, see what new gear they've got in stock, it's going to be a good time. So my drive to Rochester is about almost exactly 100 miles from where I live. So it takes me about an hour and 45 to get there. Uh, but it's well worth it. Rochester's a cool town. And I usually get lunch or dinner there too. So uh, yeah, it's always a fun, fun time. It's a beautiful day today, sunny, and it's like 85 degrees outside. Uh, perfect day for a drive. So, yeah. Excited to show you guys what I got going on with the guitar. The Fender Strat, Mexican Strat, it's all done, ready to go. And as soon as we get it back home, we'll go over all the new specs and upgrades and all that good stuff. So uh, stick around, I'll see you back at the house. <laughs> what did you guys think of my little Neo Soul uh, solo work there? Not too good. It's not really my genre, but I figured I'd try it out just for kicks. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's the following day. I got a little busy last night, so I couldn't wrap up the video, but let's get into it now. So this is my 1990 uh, Mexican Fender Strat. 1990 was the first year that they began producing Stratocasters in Mexico. So I didn't know that at the time, but I'm glad to have this guitar. Uh, however... I haven't played it in about 20 years, and that's because somebody tried to install a bridge pickup in it years ago and just kind of messed it up, and I never got around to having someone else do it professionally, so I just never got back to it. It just sat in, basically this guitar just sat in the case for two decades, a little, even longer. But finally got it to my guitar tech in Rochester and got it back home, and I'm extremely pleased with the way it turned out. It looks awesome. So I've got the Perloid pick guard, Seymour Duncan pickups. I've got uh, Custom Stack Plus pickups in the bridge and neck, the same one. 
and then I've got a custom staggered reverse wound, reverse polarity in the uh, middle position there. <laughs> I also swapped out the uh, pots, all three of them, and, you know, color change, you know, basic color changes. I changed the color of the knobs and the selector switch. Um, GraphTech XL Tusk Nut. Goto Locking Tuners. I love those. I've got them on several guitars, and they're just great. They work really well. They do what they're supposed to. Um, also... <clears throat> I've got a brass block from FU Tone. The block is significantly heavier than the original block. That's the original block right there. Uh, it's extremely thin and cheap. You know, it's just that die cast cheap metal. And it's a lot lighter than the brass one. So the brass one is supposed to help with uh, note sustain, I think. And uh, it just looks more substantial. You know, it's a nicer piece of material in there. Skunk stripe on the neck. This thing otherwise is just, this is how it came. And fortunately, I kept it in really good condition all these years. And I'm happy to say that because, you know, you never want to get rid of your first instrument. If you can avoid it, uh, don't do it, man. If you don't need the money, you know, just don't ever sell your gear because you will miss it someday. You think you don't want it now, but believe me, you'll be happy when you kept it for years and years. Yeah, so this guitar, I'm pleased to say uh, it feels really good. It, it plays well, it sounds decent. However, the neck needs to be refretted because these frets are really dead. They're super low and, and just, you know, they're just so flat and worn out. There's no point in kind of, re, you know, trying to crown them again. They're just shot. So back to the guitar tech it goes. I thought I was gonna have everything finished by the time, you know, when I brought this back home, but unfortunately I didn't. It still needs fret work. I considered swapping out the neck just to get a new neck like a Warmoth you know, custom neck and get every kind of wood you want and stainless steel frets and all that good stuff. But the one I spec'd out was like five or $600, which is more than I paid for this guitar to begin with. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to refret it. That's still going to cost me probably, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks. I'm going to see what he wants for uh, putting in stainless steel frets because I would like to have this thing just no maintenance going forward. And I prefer, you know, my preference is stainless steel frets anyhow. anyhow so figure why not just go that route. You know, pay a little more upfront one time rather than try to have to, you know, refret it every 18 months or a couple of years or whatever, you know, how often you play your guitar. So what do you guys think of this, man? Pretty cool? I like it. I think it's, I think this thing plays really well, you know. Um, it's a pretty light guitar, too. It doesn't weigh that much. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is, if it's an alder body or not. I really don't know. Maple neck, obviously. Rosewood fingerboard. But it's, it's significantly lighter than my other guitars. So, you know, for what it's worth, I don't know. But it's comfortable to play, so you can, you know, jam on this for hours. If you're up on stage, you got this on a strap. Uh, it's very comfortable to play, and it's very smooth. And the neck is not too funky. It's not too flat, and it's not some weird, really thick, you know, 50s or 60s style neck. I know they have a lot of different profiles over the years. This thing is very comfortable and, and fairly modern. You know, the neck profile is easy, it's not too thick, and it's it's definitely a C. I, it's probably a modern C, I guess they would call it. It's definitely a C-shaped neck. There's no flat spot in the back or anything like that. It's very comfortable. Yeah, so other than the refret, that's it. This thing is done. It plays fine. There's no crackling or anything like that. There's no 60-second cycle hum, hum because I got the uh, reverse round, reverse polarity. Say that 10 times fast. Uh, center pickup, so even in positions 2 and 4. There's really barely any buzz at all, any noise at all. It's pretty much dead silent. Um, yeah, so one more time. All the upgrades. Here we go. New pickguard, 
new pickups, new pots, new knobs. I went to black. Selector switch, I went to a black tip there. Uh, Gunmetal gray, I went with on the uh, input jack, as well as the locking tuners in the gunmetal color because that looks sick. And the Tusk XL graphite nut. Um, I went with the aged white, but now that I'm thinking about it, I think I either want to go white or black. I'm not really sure which one to do because I'm going to get the guitar refretted anyhow. He slotted the nut to accommodate these really low, really crappy frets, and I've got to have new frets put on, so I'm going to need a new nut again. So what do you guys think? Should I go with the white or the black for this setup here? I was kind of thinking the you know, the snow white one, but I don't know. We'll see. 1990 Fender Stratocaster, made in Mexico. Um, plays really well. You know, I have nothing to compare it to. I haven't owned any other Stratocasters besides this one. Um, I don't plan on buying any more either because, I mean, as much as I like the sound of it, you know, I'm more of a heavy metal guy, and, you know, the single coil pickups don't really do that. This is more for the, uh, the lighter rock, I guess, you know, blues stuff, that kind of thing. Um, it'll definitely get some use in the studio here, but I don't need another one, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it's pretty killer. I kept it in good shape, considering it's 30 years old. So I don't know what these go for these days, if there's any kind of, you know, appreciation value-wise in these older Mexican strats. Maybe there is or not. I'm not really sure. I haven't really looked it up. But I definitely would not get rid of it. And considering that at the time that I purchased it, it was only two or three hundred dollars. I don't remember now anymore, but it was one of those. It was really cheap. And I just love the way it played. And it was a good first guitar to learn on. And it's always going to be with me, by my side. Mexican Strat, 1990, with modern twist. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the like button if you like the video content, if what I'm bringing you. And other than that, stay healthy, stay safe. Talk to you guys soon. See ya!